Well, mock a lock a ding dong, baby. We have a mock draft episode for you today. We've already done the episode, and let me tell you, it's fantastic. You're going to really, really like it. Subscribe, leave comments, and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, May 25th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason back with you. It's a beautiful day. It's the 25th of May. That means it's time to mock draft, everybody. Oh, (laughs) yes. Uh, First mock draft episode of the year today. Nobody likes mock drafts, right? It's too early. It's never too early. Thank you, Jason. We're way late. Yeah, if anything. I mean, the NFL draft's been done for all of two weeks, right? Uh, Month? When was that? Yeah, who knows? May's a weird month around here. No, it's uh, it's been a... <laughs> it kind of just collapses upon itself. I mean, you got OTA starting up. You got people running around, uh, injury scares already. Ah, yes. Football. I forgot the fun of football. Um, Yeah, it's been a month. It's been a month since the draft. That sounds right. Yeah, but it feels like a couple of weeks. Time is flying. We'll have NFL football here soon. And we'll have the ultimate draft kit here soon. We've got one more week left until the 2023 ultimate draft kit launches. That means you got a week left to get it at the lowest possible price. You got the UDK and the UDK Plus with all the Dynasty Pass Intel, ultimatedraftkit.com. We are very excited about what we're going to bring you. I do have a little bit of breaking news on that, and the number is going to change. Mm. But thus far... We're at about 70,000 words of original analysis and content inside the UDK. Is that right? It is right. Remember, Mike, when you're like May kind of collapses in on itself? The reason is the ultimate draft kit, and it's 70,000 words. We're going through the tiered rankings. It's going to be over 80,000 by the time. It's launched. This that's is a full novel. Been, that's what I've been. T- and that's, we did ask chat GPT to tell us what a full novel was and it is qualifying. So, uh, you know, all of the player projections are in there. Sleepers, breakouts, bust values, coaching changes, rookie report, target breakdown, market share, uh, summary of the draft from a month ago. Um, hundred plus player profile videos, which I am happy to say Jason has survived their creation so mm-hmm, far. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, barely. You know what's sad is a lot of the things that we have talked about in those videos, I forget that they're not out yet. And it's like mm. such good content. And I'm waiting. Like, why is nobody talking about this great stat we shared? And it's like, it doesn't exist It's in, it's in the so, secret places. And you know what I learned? Uh, I learned about the micro nap. Because uh, I, I just, if we finish a video, I'm prepping for the the next play. We're like, who's up? Oh, it's, uh, it's Jamar Chase. I'm like, okay, let's make sure I got all my stats ready. And I look over, and then there's Jason just... Oh, he's got the eyes closed. Oh, I mean, snores snores out. Power nap. And and he just he fits it in. Yeah. And then as soon as the, they're like, okay, we're ready, then he's back. This is how I survive and thrive. <laughs> I just... Well, I, we know he I, goes to bed like he's a teenager, lo- very late at night. A lot of people don't realize that when this show, when we turn the lights off, I... I just turn off. You as power well. down. I power down. <laughs> he slumbers. And they, oh, there, <laughs> oh, there go the lights. <laughs> oh no! Oh, and down he goes. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I didn't uh, know we that, had that ability. Be, that's probably less funny <laughs> on the audio version. I don't um, know. My sound effect was pretty good. The, the sound effects were good, but people are like, "What is happening?" Well, go to YouTube and find out. Uh, which you can do, <laughs> youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers. But, yeah, the UDK, that's what it's all about right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. The cheat sheet creator's in there, too. Uh, so you're all ready to go. And um, let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. I mean, that I got to give credit to Al Borland on the, on the gag. Yeah, there because, that was a good bit. Because right before the show, he says to us, 
I'm very busy today. I've got to do two people's <laughs> jobs. Brooks isn't here today in Deucer's Alley, and I've got to handle everything. And then he jumps in with, with a good light gag. He's setting low expectations and exceeding them, so we think better of him. Oh, and speak better of him on the air. Yes. Uh, I'm going to jump in with the first bit of news. This is not NFL news, but it is uh, the latest episode of the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty podcast came out yesterday. We talked risers and fallers. Another incredibly jam-packed podcast with a lot of really good conversation. So if you're if you're playing Dynasty, even if you're not playing Dynasty, it, it it will help prepare you. But if you're playing Dynasty, it's going to be your jam. That's a little cross promotion news that yeah. Mike is sharing. Uh, Austin Eckler will play for the Chargers in 2023. They tacked on some incentives to his contract, and he will be back. Which is uh, this is great news for fantasy football for the year. Yeah, it's good news that they've come to some agreement where he seems enthusiastic to return. Aaron Rodgers suffered a strained calf at OTAs. Should be fine. Foster Moreau, incredibly full, yeah. full participant, running that's, routes. That's wild. What? Two months from the day he was, uh, it was announced that he had uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. That is just such a cool story. The, the fact that two months ago he found out he has cancer. Now he's a full participant at OTAs. Um, for fantasy purposes, I'm not in on Foster Moreau, but I do think he could muddy the water he could. for Julian Edelman. Um, <laughs> have you seen, you've seen oh, this, Mike? You, you, Jason Moore. <laughs> all right. There was news about Juwan Johnson. You think I did not see it? You think I did not share it? Have with, you missed this news, at, Andy? Of course I've missed this at news. The secret, I don't subscribe to Juwan, uh, his, the Juwan News Twitter feed. It was, just, I mean, it, it's hype. Trade season, so I'll share. But it was uh, Mike Triplett that I get the – is that his name? The, yeah. The uh, beat reporter for the Saints. And Jawan Johnson was saying uh, that like they ha he had the team prepare him a bunch of Julian Edelman tape so he could just study how Julian Edelman plays because he <laughs> – inferring that these are the type of routes that he will be running and a role he will play for Derek Carr. Now, it is is this the same kind of like core hype group that that is responsible for the absolute tragedy of Adam Troutman over the last handful of years in in the city? Uh, I'm not sure. Are these sure. the same? Is, is it, Triplet the one that was giving you a lot of Troutman news? To be fair, Juwan Johnson has actually done stuff on the NFL field yeah, that has he been has. good. Um, I I like Juwan Johnson. I think he's a quality player. But I he's I saw nothing that. without Andy Dalton. I, <laughs> nothing. I saw that he's watching Julian Edelman yeah. routes, and I went. That's Why don't you not, watch some Antonio that's Gates. That's not going to work for you. You you're six five, two hundred and fifty pounds. You can't run Julian Edelman routes. It's it's not happening. Um, or is it, Jason? No. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> um, Kyle Shanahan said that Brock Purdy will start a throwing program next week. I it's not in our notes here, but I believe the quote from him about whether he'll be ready for Week One. Or for training camp. Oh, is it a classic? Was Shani? essentially he just said, "Only God knows." <laughs> yeah. Oh, the classic. Uh, I don't. I can't guarantee we're all going to be alive listen, tomorrow. <laughs> listen, if I was San Francisco with the injury problems that they've had, that's the only answer I would give. Yeah. I would he, give God knows. I have no idea, <laughs> and I'm going to hand it over to God. Yeah, that is not coach speak. That is legitimately how he is, <laughs> has learned to think. Now he's like, I have no idea. That being said, I think we all three have statted Brock Purdy out to be the starter week one. Yes. At least that's how I had my rankings from the get-go. So this hasn't changed anything for me. Um, it's just the expectation is that Brock Purdy will be the week one starter. There were a couple pieces of NFL uh, rule news that, that broke, one of which was that there is a third quarterback that's allowed to be active on game day um, without expanding the, the game day roster to avoid – what essentially happened last year in San Francisco where, you know, Christian McCaffrey's warming up on the sideline to be your quarterback, they're going to put teams into a position where you shouldn't be seeing position players accidentally take snaps. Yeah, it's great news. I guess if you look at it the other direction, they're like conceding that maybe multiple quarterbacks can be injured on one well, week. I, but I, it's good for the, the product of the NFL because a positional player being forced into uh, – just a game in general, and I mean, like that the Kendall Hinton, yeah, like that type of thing, or that the NFL game that we had to watch, where it was Brock Purdy can't throw a football, but they had to put him back out there to hand off over and over. Because Josh Johnson got hurt, right? Yes, or, or like the Broncos games we had to watch last year, where Russell Wilson was quarterback, right? 
you now know, they, we don't options. want. The, yeah, now we now we don't have to deal with any of that nonsense. In, in other in other NFL news, they passed the rule as well where it, uh, the kick returner can signal a fair catch within the uh, field of play, and the ball will be brought out to the twenty five yard line. So this is a player safety rule. They said the most concussions happen on those plays. It does eliminate the investments team ha teams have made on like kickers that can do that well. Um, it's also a little, and, and Warren Sharp kind of pointed out the hypocrisy of it, but like it also coincided with the fact they're going to allow flexing teams into Thursday night football games, which we know short rest and things like that are not also good for player safety, but one earns them more money than the other. Yeah. Also, I, I imagine Bill Belichick is furious somewhere. Honestly, every coach that I've heard I from. I imagine that all the time. They, they, that's true. <laughs> They're all upset. This was, No players, no coaches, no head coaches, no special team coaches. Nobody wanted this rule. It was one of those things where the competition committee wanted it to continue to put effort towards uh, player safety or at least – a good press release for uh, player safety. Something kick, you can the, point to at the end of the year. They should do the XFL. They should do the XFL rule. Yes. Mike and I were talking about this, where you know the kickoff happens. Both the offense and defense are starting at whatever it is, the twenty and thirty yard line, and they cannot move until the player catches the football. And the and it the teams change. are spaced out by I don't know fifteen yards or so. It's not the the fifty yard head start that the uh, that the defense usually has, it, which causes the concussions. And no, it's more like if you snapped it to a punter and then told the punter to start right. running, and then everybody's just yep. trying to tackle him. Yeah, I mean, it's why get why even have the play anymore? That's I think that's what the the argument is at this point. Where they're what the the big pushback to this is is this feels like the beginning of or not the beginning because they've already started to tweak it, but a real start to the end of the kickoff but and as jason would say maybe the end of kickers oh man that'd be great nah, they'll still have the field goals but when you when you're the league and you've already been just taken to the cleaners for concussion problems i understand it from the nfl's perspective of they're gonna if they identify a play that really has a, a higher percentage of concussions they want to get rid of it because they don't want to keep paying out money to guys Darnell Mooney still progressing from the ankle injury, not participating, not participating at OTA. Also, so not great news. Something to pay attention to. I, I assumed he would be participating. So, yep. uh, no other news. I think we need to cover right now. I'm looking over there at Al. He doesn't have anything for me. Um, I did have this requested. Dominate your draft with yeah. Volta. My draft kit. Dominate your draft with Volta. My draft there it is. Dominate I mean, that wasn't for me. I would never play That's that. for the people. That was for the people. Uh, all right, let's let's uh, let's do it. Let's mock draft. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Talk a little bit about why we mock draft, Jason. I know it's fun and everything. It is a blast, but it's also one of those things where as you mock draft, you get used to different strategies where you're at in the draft. Are you? And, and in fact, we, we pulled randomly today uh, our draft spots, and it's really nice. Andy, you're at four. Mike is at seven. I'm at ten. And you really do implement very different strategies uh, based on that. And if you aren't mock draft, if you show up to your draft – Having listened to some podcasts, but you haven't actually done a mock draft, it is a disservice to you because having the experience of saying, well, this is what I'm going to do if this happens, or this is my idea of going, you know, if I'm at the, the, uh, at the turn at the, you know, the one, two turn, um, I, I'm going to try to play it this way or, you know, anything like that. And we're going to experience that today and show you. How to draft in 2023. You would never show up to a game of any type, a, a competitive game, without having practiced that type of a game. Yeah, you want to you experiment with different strategies and get a lay of the land of where players are going. Like Jason said, I was placed at the four spot. Tough decision for me out, uh, right out of the gate. Mike at seven, Jason at 10. 12 team, half PPR. We're mocking over on Sleeper. So one quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, one flex, four bench, mock draft. I have clicked the button, gentlemen. And uh, here we go. Christian McCaffrey off the board at 101. 
Justin Jefferson off the board at 102, and Jamar Chase <laughs> off the board at 103. Uh, I already see the dilemma. The well, I'm, you already see the pendulum having come back to of, of of what happened with running backs last year. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, it it is part what happened to running backs last year, and part there are some kind of stone cold locks at wide receiver. Not every year is like that. We've had years where, okay, it's Antonio Brown is there. But then the other players, maybe they bounce around a little bit. You know what you're getting in Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. And for this mock draft, oh, baby, you know what you're getting with the number one player in points per game yeah. last year at the wide receiver position. My pick, Cooper Cup off the board at 104. Going to give it a go. Eckler, obviously a decision I could have made there. But I'm going to see what this – uh you know, with three wide receivers going off in the first four picks, I want to see what the running back uh, position looks like on its way back around to me in the second round. So uh, I'm going to take Cooper Cup and know what I am getting there. Now, your decision was between Cup and Eckler. Is that what you were trying to decide? That is correct, yes. In, okay. a, in this format, we're looking at a half PPR draft. I have Eckler ahead of Jonathan Taylor or any of the other running backs. So uh, that's what I would have done at running back, but I went with Cooper Cup. Eckler went next, and so did Jonathan Taylor. So Mike is sitting there at 107. What are some of the decisions you're it's wide open. staring down? It is wide open at this point. This is a Travis Kelsey spot where I am personally 100% fine. If you're like, nope, I'm not going to worry about my tight end position. I'm going to take the guy who continues to be number one, who I project still will be the number one by a uh, by a significant margin, a, a margin that is enough to take a difference-making tight end this early. Do it. I'm Do it, you coward. My, I'm talking through my, my, my stuff here, man. I just don't want him to get to me. Oh, so you have to make that choice? Uh, and, <laughs> right after you talked about it, you don't want to be staring down that decision? Uh, and then Tyreek Hill would be my highest-rated wide receiver. He seems incredibly safe. Another lock. Yeah, he, at, he feels like receiver. another lock. And then the, I, I, I guess it would be the riskier pick, but also the ceiling pick of Derrick Henry is my highest-ranked running back left on the uh, on the board we have some questions about who are the titans do they stick with ryan Tannehill? do they make the switch to banana rama aka will levis at some point which seriously <laughs> it's, it's, i forgot who it was for oh, a second uh it's that I, is a terrible nickname, poor he, guy. It's his fault. Yeah. He ate a banana with a peel on no, it and it acted is. like it was it is. cool. It is you his get fault. nicknamed Banana Rama <laughs> when you are that dumb. Yeah, you and you recorded it. it just, and then you put it on the internet. It puts me in a position where I'm desperate for him to get starts this year. Because <laughs> I need that name oh. in my life. If he gets starts, it will be a cruel summer for <laughs> the Tennessee Titans. Uh but Derek Henry would be my pick. I think we still have another year. But there are like that's oh man. So I'm going to take. Him. Ha having said all those things, I'm going to take Tyreek Hill. Oh, that's who I wanted to because make it I to. feel like of the three in the first round, I want to chase the upside, but I also do want to mitigate some of the risk of blowing up a first round pick. Well, that makes sense, and so you and I both went wide receiver to start yep. this draft, uh, oh, which frankly I don't love because I don't want you competing for running backs on the way back around. Travis Kelsey goes 108 right after uh, Mike's pick. Stephon Diggs at 109. And here's Jason with running back options on the board, a one of which I know you have Saquon very highly ranked this year. Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry. Yeah, so I'm I'm at the 10 spot. My, my hope and dream was that Tyreek Hill would get to me. I would have taken Tyreek at 10 for sure without question uh, when I've been uh, drafting so far this year. If, if he's at the end of round one, he's my pick. Um it's it's really interesting this year. Usually at the 10 spot, there are more than three running backs that have gone. But this year, the wide receivers are pushed up. And so Kelsey. I'm sitting here, usually when I'm at the 10, 11, 12, and I'm so close to the turn, I don't like going double running back or double wide receiver. Just, you know, it, it gives me more flexibility the next turn if I split them. But I believe I am going to end up with two top five running backs in my ranking and if that is possible I will pull the trigger so I am taking Saquon Barkley with my first spot Andy you can fill in the teams that uh, drafted Derek Henry went next uh Devontae Adams to finish the first round Josh Allen 
with the first pick of the second round and then A.J. Brown. I believe your prophecy, if I know the second name, did come true. I'm guessing Nick Chubb was that name? Uh, that name was not Nicholas Chubb, but Nick Chubb does fit that bill. Let me see right now. Oh, oh, how funny. I was missing Nick Chubb. My actual strategy here was Saquon and in the first and Bijan in the second. Oh. Bijan Robinson uh, has, in the drafts that I've been a part of, usually been a first-round pick, and I think by the time August rolls around, he will be creeping up to the first. Um, I have Nick Chubb and B. John Robinson back to back in my rankings. So I, what do you do? I here? would be happy with either. I'm going to stick to the plan. First mock draft. <laughs> Give me the young duo of Saquon Barkley and B. John Robinson pass catching workhorse backs to start. I didn't. I didn't know where that was going, Mike. Uh, Saquon and B. John. What are your What are your reactions? I figured it was B. John. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just and, and I don't have a problem with it. Uh, so that puts so after Bijan went, Patrick Mahomes, C.D. Lamb went. I am back on the clock with Tyreek Hill at a VX of like a very I'm, difficult decision to make right here. You're you're picking three spots ahead of me, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited about the running backs that are on the board right now. So the decision, Cooper Cup, yours with Tyreek Hill. At least the way my rankings are, I'm very excited because I have. I've got my number three and four running backs still on the board. I and I one of them is in consideration for me. That I assume one of those is Joshua Jacobs. Correct. So he is in strong consideration for me. I I'm struggling right now what to do with Brees Hall because in like in my raw like you know, this initial draft of projections and statistics, he is a top five running back for me, but we still don't yet know for sure that he's going to be good to go week 1 uh but i but you know just following the 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 the, uh, the the pts out there like we got Matthew Betts and the other guys that are, and gals who are great on twitter talking about injuries their confidence in Brees Hall is pretty high at at this moment given the information that we have and then there's another running back who do i play the adp game of perhaps they make it back to me but and the wide receiver wise you know, it's like Higgins, Amon Ra, Garrett Wilson is definitely an option for me at this point because I do have him inside of my top 10. So I think I'm, I'll, I'll narrow it down to Garrett Wilson and Josh Jacobs. One of those, no, both of those ups, are upsetting to Andy. So that does, it does give me. It gives me it gives me a good feeling inside. Yeah, I mean that's the essence of what we're doing here. <laughs> um, let's you know um, what let's let's dance let's dance with the devil. I'm going Garrett Wilson. Wow. I'm gonna I'm gonna start wide receiver wide receiver and see what this build looks like. I, I was so hopeful you'd go Josh Jacobs because I knew Nick Chubb would be the next. You know he he's he's already passed where his ADP is and the computer would take him. And then I wanted to see what Andy would have to do, but unfortunately. Things yeah. worked out pretty well for you. I mean, they did. And um, Mike, with the Tyreek Hill, Garrett Wilson start, uh, that is some explosiveness on his roster. Thrilled he did not take my guy there. Nick Chubb did go next. I have Chubb one spot ahead of Jacobs in my rankings. Jacobs I have as my number four overall running back, and there are eight off the board at this point. So I feel good about that in a half point PPR. I am avoiding Brees Hall myself. Because yeah, I, I, don't, I understand. It's, I don't like the beginning of the season combined with the injury. I it's do so think, hard. I think the second half of this year, with what the Jets have on paper as a schedule and the recovery from the ACL, like there's two sides to an injury like this. Side number one is is the player healthy, but side number two is does the team manage him to begin the year? Sure, for his own good, for the team's own good, for what they have coming down the pipe. So I think that. Both of those are risks of whether he's fully healthy and the schedule and whether the team manages him. I need a fast start. I'm going to go with the the player that led the league in rushing last year. I'm going to go with Josh Jacobs. There's been nothing that's happened on that team that makes me believe he doesn't repeat what he did last year. Waddle, Brees Hall, and Jalen Hurts round out the second round. We'll talk third round momentarily.
All right, our first mock draft of the season, a half PPR, 12-team mock draft. After two rounds, I have Cooper Cup and Josh Jacobs. Mike has Tyreek Hill and Garrett Wilson, drafting from the seventh spot. I was in the fourth spot. And then Jason Moore, the only one of us with a pair of running backs so far. Saquon Bijan from the 10th spot. Jason, you were uh, you, you let out a bit of a groan when you saw that you were randomly chosen to be in the 10 spot this doesn't look that bad to me no no it doesn't um it, it really is a matter by the time it comes back to me if there's uh, there are basically two wide receiver three wide receivers I, I still love on the board if those three are gone by the time I am up I will be sad and if the, one of them is there I will be happy <laughs> okay um that does make some sense we are we're in the third round and it begins with T. Higgins off the board at 301. Uh, he went up ahead of Amon Ra, Metcalf, Devonta Smith, uh, some other options at wide receiver, but that seems like about the right spot for him. Mark Andrews still on the board. After Higgins went his quarterback, Joe Burrow, 302. How do you react to seeing Burrow go off the board that early? It's way too high for me personally. I, I've talked about this a little bit this offseason. Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, those guys – have forced all quarterbacks ahead. What they did last year and the way that they lapped the field, it made it, made you to where if you didn't have one of those guys, it was very tough to compete in fantasy football last year. And when those three guys are going in the second round, that means everyone's starting to get afraid and they want an explosive quarterback to keep up. Joe Burrow could be that. But being more of a pocket passer, I'm not spending an early third-round pick on him. All right, after Burrow was Travis Etienne running back for Jacksonville, and then I'm back on the clock with Cup. Jacobs and uh, I like I said Jacobs is sitting at four for me in the rankings my number five running back is sitting out there as well and I'm going to take him here Tony Pollard ah, running back. that was my ADP game see that felt good you're right it does feel good <laughs> yeah you got me yeah uh. Tony Pollard sitting there and I will pair him with Jacobs love that backfield Cooper Cup at the wide receiver position um, I just want to draft it the four spot every year the Tony Pollard is going to be fascinating of uh, where, I do see his where ADP. does he end up in the yeah, ADP? Yeah, I was going to say, I see it dancing around based on where this team's, what that backfield looks like in camp. Amon Ross St. Brown went next to team number five. Joe Mixon? Team six is a piling on the running backs. Hey. Taylor, Chubb, and Mixon. Very high T. Probably worth mentioning that if you are listening to this and you want to see the draft board, you can go do that. It's on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. You can watch it. You can decide what mistakes we're making in the moment and see the board. Uh, Mike, you are on the clock. Now, you and Jason went two wideouts, two running backs. Correct. And Jason said one of the reasons at the turn he doesn't like to go one position only is because of flexibility. Starting right here in the third round, now you've gone two wide receivers. Does that eliminate them from contention for your roster? No, at, at this point I'm just experimenting. I want, I want to see what this build uh, ends up with because if, if I were – if it was like really on the clock, I probably end up taking Jacobs instead of Garrett Wilson. But I want to ride this out and see where we go. And part of riding that out is uh, there is I mean, there's still some good running backs like Ramondre is still there. I have him as a top ten guy. You have, you have the 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 mystery of Dalvin Cook. <laughs> like if if Dalvin Cook is a Minnesota Viking in week one, and you're able to draft him in the third or the fourth round, like that's that's a, that's theft. Because he's he's still going to be good for that team, but I'm going to go over to the tight end position and I'm going to take Ooh. I'm going to take Mark Andrews. Oh, I love it! I I genuinely love it. I mean, I've I've talked about the value that I think he represents in the third versus Travis Kelsey. I would rather have Tyreek Hill and Mark Andrews rather than Travis Kelsey and Debo Samuel, who's the next highest rated uh, ADP wide receiver here. That was. Um that was the only name I stared at longer than a couple seconds when Tony Pollard was on the clock. So, I figured I was getting Andrews or Pollard. Um, so after Mark Andrews joins Mike's team, we've got Kenneth Walker and Ramondre Stevenson off the board. Jason, uh, you only saw, what is that? Well, you had quite a few wide receivers go off the board after your pick. You've the, waited a while. Yeah, this was fine. I mean, I never thought that Amon Ross St. Brown would get all the way back to me or T. Higgins or Jalen Waddle. When I was taking the two running backs, there were 
two wide receivers that I hoped would get back to me, three that I would be okay with. That was Devonta Smith, Keenan Allen, and Chris Olave in that order. I'm going to take Devonta Smith. Uh, I think he's obviously a part of a great offense. He's a phenomenal wide receiver, and he has the built-in, you know, the, the Waddle, Higgins, and uh, Devontae Smith, wide receiver two. They have the built-in world where an injury can thrust them into superstardom. And they're capable of being ones on rosters. It's not like Josh Palmer gets an opportunity and can't fill those shoes. Devonta Smith can do it. Plus, I'm, I feel like you're paying homage to him winning you a title last year. Yes, sir. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, <laughs> it feels really good. Champ is here, and Mike. Keenan Allen made it back around to me. So, starting with Barkley and Bijan, having Devonta Smith and Keenan Allen in the third and fourth, I'm I'm really happy with uh, how that team starts. Yeah, Mike, uh, Jason may or may not have inquired of our uh, sprinkler situation in the building and whether or not pyrotechnics for his uh, attendance to our draft would be appropriate for we got, celebrating. We, we got to be prepared, you know. This is the first time I've never wanted to attend our own. <laughs> our own. <laughs> that day. is exciting. Plans are being made, fellas. I I am happy to hear that. Uh, I have started my own plans as well, and pyrotechnics did cross my <laughs> mind. Oh my <laughs> goodness, you can't but be serious. I went with on the side of that seems like a burn everything down to the ground hazard. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd probably. But maybe we'll figure that out. <laughs> All right, so after Keenan, so Mike, uh, or sorry, Jason has Saquon, Bijan, Devonta Smith, and Keenan Allen. I would say when I read those four names, the word solid comes to mind in terms of kind of production. I You know, good start. Amari Cooper, Dalvin Cook off the board. A little upset Dalvin went just because I wanted you to stare him down in the fourth round. Mike, you are back on the clock. Still no running backs. Yeah, still no running backs, and they are – Starting to get mighty thin when it comes to at least a a starting level caliber running back. Uh, I'm pretty upset here with Team Eleven because I was just I was going to go stack. If Lamar Jackson had come down to me, I was just I was going to let that ride okay. and have Mark Andrews and Lamar Jackson and see where we went from there. The wide receiver position, guys that I would be looking at if if I'm going to go there would be, you know, Olave, maybe DeAndre Hopkins. Which he's his future is still very up in the air, still very shaky. He's not at OTAs for Arizona. Yeah, that makes sense. And then and we got a, a recent quote that was basically like, No, nothing I said means I want to stay there. And I don't know. It's, it's, I would like all my options open, please, <laughs> no matter who's listening to me. It's been a very strange off season here with DeAndre Hopkins feeling like he's saying he's gonna be here, saying he doesn't want to be traded. But telling other teams where he wants to go, and now saying no, I don't necessarily want to be in Arizona. I don't. So that's that's a very difficult decision. Uh, but let's keep the good times rolling. I'm going to go with Chris Olave. I'm going to get another second year wide receiver on my team, who's statistically speaking was right behind Garrett Wilson. I think that the Derek Carr addition to the New Orleans Saints is a massive improvement over Andy Dalton. We do always want to be careful with these new quarterbacks coming in. Not overvaluing them, but uh, I mean, over the past uh, four or five years, Derek Derek Carr has supported a top twelve option at a position. I don't think he can sustain a bunch of people, but I think it's my bet's going to be on Olave. Yeah, I'm a little upset that you went Olave, not because I was necessarily expecting to get him, but because it knocked DK Metcalf off the board with the next pick. Who I Aha. did, I did hope he would sneak to me with the fourth round selection. You've gone three wideouts and a tight end, and uh, you've you've stripped a few of those wideouts off the board. Swift went next. That puts me in a position here with Cup, Jacobs, and Tony Pollard, and um, I, I can't say that I have a name jumping off the board at wide receiver right now. I see a number of names that I'm I'm fine with coming back around to me. I also have Justin Herbert ranked pretty high, but I really don't want to take him here with other names I have on the board. I'm deciding between Miles Sanders and Jameer Gibbs here, uh, and I'm going to go with the player I have ranked higher, Miles Sanders in Ooh, Carolina. Man, very robust. Yeah, uh, got Jacobs, Pollard, and Sanders in three rounds Ow! in a row. And Team three. Are you disappointed? In, uh, let me read what went off the board. Justin Fields went next, then DJ Moore, Hawkinson, Mike Williams, Michael Pittman, and Jameer Gibbs. 
Yeah, I thought, you wanted Gibbs there in the fifth round. I thought I thought I'd get a little Gibby Gibby surprise. Nope, I did not. Yeah, no. this is uh, Mike's <laughs> doing his own little zero RB here and yeah. hoping that some of these guys fall and they're not falling. No, they're not. So I've got a long wait after this pick. I did mention my number five ranked quarterback last round. I'll take him here because I feel like there's a teardrop after Justin Herbert, and I'll take him in the fifth round. I don't want to mess around with the later Aaron rodgers decisions of this draft. I'm going to leave that to Mike and Jason. But uh, I went Herbert, and I'm going to wait a long time for a wide receiver, but Dobbins, sorry, Mike, Javante Williams off the board. You're back on the clock yeah. with your fifth-round pick. Dobbins was going to be a difficult I figured he decision. was going to be your pick. He Maybe. It's hard to have for me. It's hard to have Mark Andrews, and then that's true. Dobbins be my running back one and kind of f limit my weekly upside there. Uh, Jameer Gibbs was my hope and my dream. My backup option though was, I mean, it's it, it's it doesn't feel the best when you draft him. I know who but, it is. <laughs> But try to remember how good he was last year because he was an absolute tank and a beast to close out the season. James Conner, please be good. I knew. Please, I knew it was James Conner. Please be Connor. good. Oh, man. And that's the kind of fifth round talk to yourself yeah. that you have when you go wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end, wide receiver. Yeah, I I really thought about just taking Hopkins there. and and But I, then you I, got somebody in the – I mean, you're on the bench. Yeah. You got a bench wide receiver in your first five picks. Um, yeah, yeah that's I the guess. hard part about that. And I, I would have been. In I the guess same, I was thinking our league we play two flex. I would have yeah. been in the same boat if I had taken Miles Sanders and Jameer Gibbs was sitting there in the next round, and I would have regretted that pick. Uh, Jason, you're back on the clock after Connor was McLaurin and Hopkins. Yeah. So the the positional players, you know, usually here I'm in the fifth round. I've got two running backs. I've got two wide receivers. I'm usually looking to continue to stack up running backs and wide receivers. That's the way that I usually want to play. Uh, draft a later quarterback and a later tight end if I'm not gra able to get Mark Andrews. But the running backs and wide receivers that are available right here, they, there's not a big tear drop to me between them and who might be there the next round. There's Jerry Judy, there's Mike Evans, Drake London, all guys who have, you know, Chris Godwin, really good options, but they're not lock solid guarantees that they're great at running back. I am lower on Damian Pierce than I think a lot of people are. There's questions about Camara and Akers. Um, so I'm actually going to do something I don't think I've done this entire off season. And in the fifth round, I'm going to draft a player that I know I am higher on than both of you. I believe he's going to be great. And I think it starts this year. So I'm going to take Trevor Lawrence and wow. get the, the quarterback that I think has the ability to jump up into next year's discussion of top options. Eight quarterbacks off the board here in the fifth round. Akers next, London, Pierce, and Watson, Jason, with the quick turn here, another decision to be made. Another decision to be made, and it was kind of made for myself by saying, I believe in Trevor Lawrence. I believe in Trevor oh. Lawrence. It, stack, 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 stack. Huh? That pick is not a good pick if Calvin Ridley doesn't help him level up. But I am saying that is my belief. And when you draft, I think it's important. You know, we're playing to win a championship. <clears throat> You're playing that your draft is correct, that it's right. Right. And so, like, for instance, when Mike grabs Mark Andrews, he's saying Mark Andrews might have 10 touchdowns, right? It's not – maybe it doesn't go J.K. Dobbins' way. You Both those guys can't score on the same play. So I'm going to stack them up. I'm going to take Calvin Ridley, hope that he becomes a wide receiver one with Trevor Lawrence, and, you know, I'm putting some eggs in the Jacksonville Jaguars basket. Well, then you'd be happy with the little hype, hype train puff piece. I mean, we're already starting – Starting to get them yes, from OTAs. Are. But about uh, Sports Illustrated's John Shipley coming out and saying, Calvin Ridley, quote, simply moves differently than any other wide receiver on the field. I know it's been a long time. I wonder time. what kind of uh, – <laughs> he skips everywhere. I know it's been yeah. – that, that, doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean good. He's just saying – he's just stating he moves differently. It's like Charles Barkley's golf swing. Yeah. It's, it's a different golf different. swing. <laughs> yeah. The, the, 
Charles Barkley moves differently on the golf course. Thing. Calvin Ridley has been an elite no. wide receiver in the NFL. He's only 28 years old. Obviously, it's been a little while. Um, and so, I, I mean, that is a big – say what you will. You believe, but it is a big bet on Jacksonville in the middle of your draft, which is, which is you fine. You historically bad. That's not a great sentence to say no. in most drafts. I'm not Maybe usually, this year. Yeah, I'm not usually wanting to bet on the, the Browns and the – and the the Jacksonville Jaguars or the Cardinals, like you know, there's franchises that lose more than they win. Kyle Pitts, I don't know if you guys have heard of him. He's the tight end from Atlanta. That's off a, the board. That's a good pick in the sixth in the I, sixth round. I didn't want him there at six oh nine because I didn't want to. Think you would about have it. to take him if I didn't take Trevor Lawrence and I went positional. He was going to be my sixth round pick. Uh, Alvin Kamara next. Mike, you are on the clock. Uh, not that you need anything else after adding James Conner to your team. Yeah, it's, we, we can wrap this thing up. But uh, uh, what are you thinking about? So I have – I still have a top 24 running back uh, in my rankings that is left on the board. Who's that? And I'm going to take him. It's David Montgomery. Uh, yes, Jameer Gibbs is the hotness. Yes, he is going to be utilized a lot. But they gave Montgomery the contract to use him, so – we're not exactly sure how the split will 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 shake up between Gibbs and Montgomery, but if Montgomery ends up with the like a Jamal Williams light type of a workload, and we're looking at the possibility of eight plus touchdowns on the ground, I would be very happy that I got that in the sixth. David Montgomery joining James Conner on your roster. I am crest, <laughs> I'm crest I'm crestfallen. <laughs> that was a that was a close one, everybody. With the white running backs? Yeah. I was uh I figured you taking Montgomery guaranteed I would get one of the next two players that went off the board. Instead, they went back to back. Judy, Mike Evans, they're gone. It is back to me. The the tier break at wide receiver, uh, players that I'm excited about, if you build that list out, um, and you guys aren't picking before my next pick, so I'll just talk about my thought process here. I'm going to take uh, a, a stable receiver here at Chris Godwin. Mm -hmm. following up I Mike like Evans. I, Chris Godwin is is much higher than my in my projections right now than I thought he would be. Yeah, he's I, higher I, than Mike Evans in mine. Like I I think that Chris Godwin will another year removed from the ACL injury that I it seemed like it was uh, hobbling his play. And even with bad quarterback play, I mean Chris Godwin's the one who should take the lowest hit. I know the pass attempts are going to come down for Tampa Bay, but Crisp route runner, good hands. Uh, I think that Godwin's going to be just fine. I want you guys to talk me through this next pick briefly because I have Godwin now to go with Cup. I have Jacobs, Pollard, and Miles Sanders, and I have Justin Herbert. After Godwin, Ayuk, Goddard. Goddard was a target for me. It would have been the pick here. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, A.J. Dillon, Isaiah Pacheco, Deontay Johnson. Here's my situation. I am going to take a wide receiver here. Yeah, and there's a unbelievably great one there and I don't know if you're saying the same name that I'm saying I think you're writing it down on the on the board here um here's the, here's the problem that I have I, I I'm just gonna outlay this for people Tyler Lockett's sitting there on the board and that's the name Jason wrote down that's the name that is the better pick here however it's a tough situation in drafts when you know you're going to wait 14 picks and at some point, I was hoping to add Quentin Johnston later in this draft. Uh, I don't think he will come back to me. He might. He might come back to me, and, and you guys can steal him. But that's the tough dilemma for people in fantasy drafts is you've got a player that's lower on ADP. You want to take a gamble for You'd love to get them on your team. I wanted to stack him with Justin Herbert, but he's not the right pick right now. And, and if you had three wide receivers and he was going to be your fourth, Quentin Johnston, even ahead of ADP, like, to me, that makes a lot of sense. But considering that this is still your third wide receiver, I know. I feel like you got to take the guarantee. And that's what I did. I'm going to go with Lockett, and I'm going to play the game and see what comes around. Mike is just grimacing. He's giving me the bitter beer face. I love your team, Andy. I, I You know, my rankings have Lockett very high, Cup very high, Miles Sanders very high, and uh, it's turning out very well for you. You're, you're balanced with a good quarterback. You will not get Quentin Johnston. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look, Hollywood was a, a, in consideration there too. Christian Kirk went next, then Dak Prescott. Mike, you are on the clock with that bitter face. Mm, it, I mean, I've gambled many times. <laughs> 
many times already in this draft, and I have not hit on any of them. Uh, Tyler Lockett was the instant pick if he was on the board for me. Uh, so my next pick will be Quentin Johnston, but for this pick... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. I but, love it. But for this pick... Um, I like Hollywood, I think is a great pick here. I have James Conner. I don't love that, but at this point of like, I, I think it might be the right pick because we're so early on in the off season and not knowing for sure if Hopkins is going to be here. It's this, it's this, it's the Dalvin cook, Alexander Madison situation. If you're drafting right now and you're getting a value on Hollywood Brown and then the very next day, the Deandre Hopkins news comes out that he gets traded. Hollywood Brown was fantastic as the wide receiver one for the Arizona Cardinals. Again, tons of unknowns. Is Kyler going to be there week one? Will Colt McCoy be there week one? We just we don't know. But upside wise, if things go right for Hollywood Brown, he'll be he'll he will smash his seventh round ADP. All right, we're, there it is. All right, as we get through the seventh round here and Jason's next two picks, we'll speed things up a little bit. But, uh, Jason, why don't you make this pick and then I'll recap rosters after seven rounds. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I know what I'm going to do with these next two picks. The player that I want the most is Antonio Gibson. I have two running backs. I think Antonio Gibson, without uh, J.D. McKissick catching passes, is going to have a very, very good season. But he's buried right now in the rankings. This would be a reach ahead of ADP. and. Uh, my team still needs a tight end. Darren Waller is the last tight end out there that could be the true number one target for his team. So I'm going to take Darren Waller and assume that Antonio Gibson will make it back to me, and which he, he does. Did. Saquon Barkley, B. John Robinson, and Antonio Gibson are your running backs. Devontae Smith, Keenan Allen, and uh, Calvin Ridley are your wideouts. You have Trevor Lawrence and Darren Waller. Mike, you are on the clock. Tyreek, Garrett Wilson, Olave, Hollywood. Strong wide receiver room. Mark Andrews, James Conner, and David Montgomery. The rest of your roster. I'm sitting with Cooper Cup, Godwin, and Lockett at wideout. Jacobs, Pollard, and Sanders with Herbert. You are sitting here in the eighth round, Mike. We have four picks left. Thankfully, Quentin Johnston did go off the board, so I don't have to just burn a spiteful pick because uh, it's not the right pick for my team at this moment. But, Which proves that there are times in your draft you have to make the right pick and you don't get the guy that you would love to have had. Yeah. Because I either take Quentin Johnston around early and devalue my roster because I want to have that stack for the fun of it, or I take the right pick. And that's that's tough. I mean, I think there are situations where you're just going to say you want to have fun, you want to take that player that you want to enjoy, but the, the gap between those two right now are just too big. All right. the uh, I'm in between two players here. Uh, I kind of took, at least for, for my strategy as of drafting this right now, Hollywood is you know a little bit of a projection that perhaps DeAndre Hopkins is going to be gone. The next two guys that I'm looking at would be Alexander Madison with the hopes and the dreams that Dalvin Cook is going to get moved or, or re released from the team. Or, and I don't know if I want another one of those players on my team, so I'm going to go with the player who I think has the role right now Jason just gave me an incredible stat this morning. I think it was a friend of the show, Ian Harditz, uh, tweeted out a yards per carry um, mm. about players who have reached a certain threshold of carries and just looking at their career yards per carry. Rashad Penny, starting running back, i going to speak that into existence, starting running back of the Philadelphia Eagles. If he takes that Miles Sanders role, I know that Swift is there, but if Rashad Penny stays on the team and takes that Miles Sanders role, he is going to be a screaming value. All right. My eighth round pick here, I'm going to go with a player that's on my breakout list for the season. Uh, I have what I think are very stable options at wideout. I want a young, up-and-coming option. I'm going to go Jahan Dotson in Washington with my eighth round pick. Burks, Cook, Thomas, Tony, Brandon Cooks, and Juju go next. Almost all wideouts, which makes me kind of happy that I went that direction. Uh, and then coming back around in the ninth round, I'm still dancing a little at the tight end position. I'm going to wait there. And uh, there are some names of interest. It's tough looking at the 
running back room. I'm going to go with the gamble now. Perfect timing. Ninth round, Alexander Madison. Yeah, that's the right pick right and, there. Uh, and we'll move it on to Mike's pick. Schultz and Ingram went next. Two more tight ends. All right. So at this point, you're just you – know, now you're picking from your your favorite sleepers. Um, a couple of mine already went with Kadarius Toney, Michael Thomas, Brandon Cooks. Uh, I'm still not very deep at running back yeah, with with James Conner, David Montgomery, and Rashad Penny. Let me look through my list here. It's uh, Brian Robinson. <laughs> it's not an inspiring pick, but it uh, would fit with your like existing running backs to just get the job done. Yeah, uh, I don't want. I, I need someone who has some upside here. Uh, I'll I'll go with this player. We have a uh, a split opinion on this running back. I'm going to take Damian Harris, running back for the Buffalo Bills. I think that he is the primary go uh, uh, replacement for Devin Singletary. I'm not in love with James Cook. James, I don't know that he's big enough. Buffalo, I don't think ever turns into a team where you're like, oh, I got the Buffalo cat, uh, pass catching oh, no. running back. <laughs> oh, Jason, did you just click through a pick? <laughs> yes, I did not mean to trap this player. <laughs> Son of a gun. But anyway, so uh, I think that Damian Harris will have uh, the – I think he's the 1A of the running back committee. Josh Allen steals, steals rushing touchdowns, but I think that the scraps will be picked up and given to Damian Harris. Uh, nothing happened, Jason. Oh, oh, yeah. oh perfectly, yeah. it, boo, mag it magically boo, disappeared. Hey, you definitely – This is why we practice because you got to live with these yeah, mistakes. Quick trigger finger. You definitely didn't take Zeke there. Um Mike with Damian Harris, I do think it's interesting, and I'll, I'll say it because it is what it is, but we we have a powerful offense in Miami that hasn't had a running back drafted in this draft. Dude. They, There's not a running back off the board in the ninth round from the Miami backfield, which I think is is kind of – you know, I tweeted that there's a handful of these backfields that you just – you don't know whether you want to mess with them, but the ninth round is when you mess with them. Uh, l let me tell you something. When Mike was talking and the way he described that we're kind of split on yep. this player and he's going a little lower, my heart fluttered because my pick is A-Chain. Like, Devon A-Chain is who I want more than anything. Now, he is low enough that, again, I'm going to play the game like I did with Antonio Gibson. He's going to be my next pick. I'm sure he's going to get back to me. I'm drafting him well ahead of ADP. But Devon A-Chain... I have him very, very high in my initial rankings. Yeah, that's some that's something that we three very much disagree on. Oh, we have a we literally have a hundred dollar bet as to the amount of carries that he will average. Uh Andy is not a believer that he will have enough volume. I believe these two guys both like Jeff Wilson. I I think Devon A. Chain's gonna have a phenomenal year. I'm gonna take a couple of rookies here. I'm gonna start with Zay Flowers. Um, I have him leading in targets. These are two nebulous situations, the Baltimore receiving core and the Miami Dolphins running back room. They could go a number of different ways, so I'm going to take a shot at both of them to hopefully get it right. All right, so uh, Jamal Williams went next, another value in the 10th round. David Njoku was a tight end target for me here late in the draft. Uh, I think he is undervalued with Deshaun Watson in Cleveland. Mike, your second to last pick. So right here, uh, if I were to take a wide receiver, Rashad Bateman is sitting at the top of the ADP list, and I agree with that. Uh, Jason went with Zay Flowers. I would have gone with the upside of uh, Rashad Bateman, who we saw be a tremendous field stretcher. Uh, the, the the rest of the wide receivers to me is just kind of uh, – I'm, I'm not really loving anything there, but I appreciate – uh, Andy reminding me about yeah. the, the Miami Dolphins because yeah. I will take Jeff Wilson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, Jeff Wilson I think will lead that backfield in carries without question. It's just a matter of will that be more productive right. than Devon A. Chain. Tua and Kirk Cousins go next. My tight end selection might make it back to me in the 11th round. Might not. Not going to mess with it. Chickaconquo out of Tennessee yeah. will be my selection in like the 10th it. round. And coming back around into the 11th, by the way, Kyler goes off the board after Chig, uh, Bateman, Mooney, Herbert, uh, Singletary, Knox. Uh, it's worth mentioning Herbert and the Bears' backfield. That is a an oversight, I think. By maybe not an oversight, but another. That one's hard. It's in another the same category as Miami, Herbert, Foreman, and company in Chicago. Not knowing where that's going to be. Bad offensive line situation historically. And then Wilson, A-Chain, Mostert. Like, Mostert's still on the board. Not going to take him here. But 
you know, it's just kind of a mess. Yeah, listening to the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty show that came out yesterday really actually helped me realize I don't want to call a shot on the Chicago Bears backfield. Sometimes a, a nebulous situation is good, but this is a backfield that if one of these guys becomes the dog, well, that's not necessarily even that great a role with a mobile Justin Fields not dumping the ball off and stealing goal line touches, and more than likely one of these guys doesn't take the lion's share. So I'm out on the Bears' backfield. <sighs> and then this, this final pick, uh, not a situation that I would normally put myself in, but it, I look at the final pick of your draft as somebody that you could end up cutting in week one. You want to see how the chips fall. You want a high upside payoff. How are they going to be involved in the offense? And so because I just took Chig with the 10th round, I'm going to come back with Dalton Kincaid and find out if he is lining up in the slot on every down to start the season. And do I have a steal at tight end that can move, sure. uh, you know, move my fantasy team forward. So, uh, Mike, your final pick, you are quarterbackless. So I, this is going to be a late round quarterback. It, it, it And it's it, the one that I know, I know which one it is. I, possibly, possibly, you know, because it's down to, uh, at this point, with with this late and the quarterbacks who are left, it is to me Geno Smith, who is the, I think, still has some upside and feels safer. You have the the young rookie. You have Anthony Richardson. Do you call the shot that he becomes the next Josh Allen, next Cam Newton, Jalen Hurts, the true dual threat? But can he get it done through the air? Uh, I have Richardson ranked a little bit lower. The two guys I have ranked right next to each other. It's Geno Smith. And it's Aaron Rodgers. I think that he has a bounce back campaign with the new team back with Nathaniel Hackett. And I have Garrett Wilson on my roster. So I'm just going to go with the stack fun of if Wilson is who I drafted in the second round, Rodgers is at least doing something. That was the pick I expected oh, you to very take nice. there. It uh, made sense to me. Alan Lazard, his teammate, goes next. Then Adam Thielen. Jason, you have a final selection. You're you're filled up on all positions, so you can do what you want. I can do what I want. I'm going to swing for the fences with another rookie, so I'm going back Good. to back That's to back. Go. Oh, are you going Rushy? I am not. Oh, okay. I, I do love Rushy Rice, and if I was going wide receiver, that would be my pick. I'm going Kendra Miller, a running back that um, I yeah, think okay. we all just sure. really, really love if Alvin Kamara's suspension comes through. New Orleans, and yeah. I, I believe he is a much better running back than Jamal Williams, so I, I think he can win an important job there. All right, let's uh, go ahead and pull the big draft board up for the YouTube uh, watchers right now. Final rosters, uh, we'll each read our own. Cooper Cup, Chris Godwin, Tyler Lockett, Jahan Dotson at wideout. I've got Jacobs, Pollard, Miles Sanders, and Madison at running back. Herbert is my quarterback. Chigakonkou and Dalton Kincaid, my final two picks at the tight end position. At wide receiver, I have Tyree Kill, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, and Marquise Hollywood-Brown. My tight end is Mark Andrews at the running back position. I have uh, the incredible pack of James Conner, David Montgomery, Rashad Penny, Damian Harris, Jeff Wilson, just hoping that two of them <laughs> turn into starters. And then Aaron Rodgers was my final pick to stack with Garrett Wilson. At quarterback, I've got Trevor Lawrence at the top. Running back, Saquon Barkley, B. John Robinson, Antonio Gibson, Devon A. Chain, and Kendra Miller. And then a wide receiver, I've got Devontae Smith, Keenan Allen, Calvin Ridley, and Zay Flowers and uh, Darren Waller. One sentence reflection on your roster. Balanced with upside. Mike? Uh, top heavy. Top heavy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, one sentence. I will say uh, steady. Steady and I, I feel like balanced is, is probably. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out for this first mock of the year. Um, it's fun when you get into this and you, you realize already, at least I did going through this draft, the names that have big question marks over their head, uh, the decisions on a cook and a Madison, the decisions on like, you know, Khalil Herbert in this draft, if he was the starter in Chicago, he, he went he in the last drafted. round of yeah. this draft. It should be earlier than that. which, yeah. um, I'll be honest. If I staring down Madison and Herbert, that's that's a tough call. And when you're drafting in this time of year, like we're about to talk about underdog fantasy, if if you're playing underdog, guys like Ezekiel Elliott, sure. who, who, you know, it's like, if he signed with someone, which I assume he's going to, but if he had already done it, he's not going at the very, very end of a draft. It's true. Basketball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. 
All right, we do a fresh best ball breakdown segment leading into the season, talking best ball on Underdog Fantasy. Uh, Jason has been uh, on the clock 24-7 in the office. Every time I look over, he's making another decision. Let me check. I'm on the clock in two leagues. It it (laughs) troubles me a little because uh, if you know Jason, and he'll tell you this, making decisions, very difficult for him. Yeah. Very thorough. He's a thorough man. Takes his time. Indecisive as well. Yeah, indecisive. So so you have how many leagues you're in at this exact moment? Uh, I'm in 13? 13 drafts right now. 13 drafts, almost always on the clock, indecisive, always making a decision. Uh, been playing a lot of best ball. We're looking at, on today's best ball breakdown, players that we have projected much higher in or, our rankings. Or lower. Or lower. Uh, compared to the actual best ball average draft position, which is best ball ADP. For those of you unfamiliar, to say it really quickly, best ball, they take your best performing players in any given week. They put them into your roster. You're not making lineup decisions. And so a lot of the times, best ball ADP is not perfectly reflective of of what you're going to get in redraft because you're shooting for the moon a lot of the time. Some of the players with higher upside Go a little bit higher in best ball ADP. A Mike Williams who's going to have big boom games and then completely disappear is a great pick in best ball, whereas in your home league, you might not be able to rely on plugging them in every week. Yeah, and I think you see that with rookies too. You know, Anthony Richardson or Dalton Kincaid or Zay Flowers, they may go a little higher because you're hoping you get that breakout season. And uh, so I'll jump in right there because my player that I am going to talk up or down is Dalton Kincaid. You are right. Dalton Kincaid is going way too high. Because he's a rookie, because there is this hope that he just comes out and he gets 10 touchdowns from Josh Allen and is unbelievable and sets the all time. He might be, for all we know, and this is true, this is a fact, he could become the greatest tight end in the history of football. At this point, he could. At this point, we don't know. And so people swing for the fences on rookies. It makes sense. I am here to say it is a bad bet to swing on rookie tight ends. This isn't. This shouldn't surprise anybody. We've known this for years. Rookie tight ends suck. Kyle Pitts sucked. Everyone sucks as a rookie. They're just not great for fantasy. The best, Evan Ingram, the best rookie seasons are okay for fantasy. You know, the, so the ceiling here I don't believe exists for Dalton Kincaid. Andy, where you took him in this draft on today's episode was the tight end 16. Right now on underdog, he's the tight end 11. In my rankings, which I gave him good rankings, he's the tight end 17. I think he's going to have a decent season, but I think the stack with people that draft Josh Allen and the rookies, the the allure is making him too high. There are there are so many tight ends going not a little bit later. Like Gerald Everett. Gerald Everett's going to get his touchdowns from from Herbert. He's going like 70 picks later. So I, I just think that Dalton Kikade is being overdrafted on underdog right now. I went with a tight end as well. It was somebody I was targeting in our mock draft today that just it didn't work out. I missed them by two picks. Or I'm sorry, I missed them by four picks. But Dallas Goddard, I think, is a player that is being undervalued. And I have him as my tight end three, surprisingly. He's going as the tight end six and underdog. Number one in yards per target among tight ends. Two years in a row. A quarterback we trust. Um you know, I actually have him statted for more receiving yards than Mark Andrews this year. That's just the way that my projections ended okay. up. Uh, he's routinely going too late, and he missed time last year, so he's not. He didn't make the headlines that I think he would have uh, if if he had been healthy throughout the entire year. I think we would have been talking a lot about him winning people championships if he had played a few more weeks than he did. So that's a player that I wanted to highlight as maybe more upside than people expect. And I want to highlight. Hot Lockett, Mr. Tyler Lockett. When a team drafts a first-round wide receiver, you need to adjust, and we need like the market needs to do something. And the market did something, uh, not to DK Metcalf. Mm-mm. He's he's just sitting where he always has been, which that's fine. But Tyler Lockett has dropped to wide receiver thirty-three on <laughs> Underdog. Tyler Lockett, a player who has finished as a top fifteen wide receiver. Each of the last five years is being drafted behind rookie wide rec- receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba. Rookie, uh, I'll just remind you, rookie means he's not taken a single snap in the NFL, and there is a a player on that team who has been over a thousand yards four straight years, 
averaging essentially nine touchdowns a year. And I I don't understand what is happening. I, I guess I sort of get it because this just happens to Tyler Lockett every single year. He does have some inconsistencies or has uh, in his past. But at the end of the year, I will be shocked if Lockett appears in 17 games and, and so does Jackson. If Smith and Jigwit finishes ahead of Lockett, I will be shocked. I, I, would, I would bet almost anything on that not happening. In two wide receiver sets as a rookie, JSN is not forcing DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett off the field. He's a slot player. He will be playing probably about 70% of snaps max. And then you talk about the best ball format, the big, long touchdown plays that Tyler Lockett has. You know, he's had seven, eight, nine, ten touchdowns in seasons before, and he's not a red zone weapon. He's a deep threat w weapon that scores massive amount of points not just like a PPR I do, guy. I do almost feel, though, uh, and I, I certainly don't disagree with what you're saying, Ty Tyler Locke has been an undervalued year after year. I just took him in our draft. Right. But I do want to like provide some reasoning as to why that happens, which is, and it's funny because I can take an example straight from Seattle where when the age hit, it just was gone. I mean, Jason has spent an offseason and a half talking about Adam Thielen's age and how, you, yes, you're great, you're great, you're great, and then you're gone. Same thing happened to Doug Baldwin in Seattle. Three consecutive years in Seattle, Doug Baldwin, great, 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 turns 30, nine games, injury, never plays another down of football in his life. So the fear and the kind of the depreciation of the value of a Tyler Lockett or players in that category is because when the end comes, it comes. And at least the path to an ending comes when you're talking about you know, Jackson Smith and Jigba arriving to this roster. Last year, this team played a lot of 12 personnel. You saw Noah Fant. You saw Will Disley on the field with Lockett, DK Metcalf. That ain't happening this year if Tyler Lockett is himself. You're going to have 11 personnel. Noah Fant, Jackson Smith and Jigba in the slot, Lockett, Metcalf. There's a reason why players like that do get depreciated because – you don't want to hold the bag. When you they don't age want out. to hold the bag, and right. I totally understand that. The one thing people need to understand about Tyler Lockett. Let me read you a really cool stat of his games played recently: 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. Because he doesn't take hits, <laughs> he gets the football and he just lays on the ground. This is a Darren yes, Sproles does. type player. That's like. I mean, you just never see Tyler Lockett even get tackled. It's just I I I caught the ball. I might as well just take a knee. <laughs> and I agree. You don't want to be left holding the bag. Uh, but there's like an underdog wide receiver 33. That's not a risk really. I mean, you're, you're not drafting him anywhere close to where he has finished for five straight years. Which is the point. I mean, the point is the yeah. draft value. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all about that, that Tyler Lockett life right now. Yeah. You have him in redraft 20 spots higher than where yes. his ADP is in best ball. So there's a lot of room in between wide receiver 13 and wide receiver 33 to take that shot on a guy that has perennially proven very valuable for your team. All right, that was Best Ball Breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Get your first deposit matched up to $100 using the code BALLERS. Also, we are going to be doing a draft together on Underdog this week, so keep an eye out for a tweet. Get signed up and uh, come play with us. Yeah, and we'll talk about the results of that draft next week. So that'll do it for today's episode of the podcast. Thank you for tuning in and listening to our first mock draft episode. And do not miss your chance. Get the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Grab that discount. It's out in a week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.